Hey everyone, Morgan here. So today we're going to be talking a little bit about the kinetic molecular theory. Now this device here that I'm hiding behind is called a cryophorus. Now what I asked the glass blower to do was to take two round bottom flasks that were the 250, 300 milliliter size and to join them together with a glass tube and to put a dimple right here. You can see I can put my hand in right? Then put some water in and so that it would be visible I had him color it with some cobalt chloride. It could have just as easily been food coloring but I wanted something that would be a nice good easy to see color. Now the way it was manufactured was that once it was assembled like this, this was dropped into liquid nitrogen and a vacuum pump was hooked up here and all of the air was removed. The water stayed behind because it was frozen down here. It was a solid. It was sealed off and there was basically zero pressure inside there. Now, when it came out of the liquid nitrogen and was allowed to warm up, a lot of that water evaporated, okay? And it is flying around in there, water molecules, randomly hitting all the walls all throughout there. And more and more as the temperature goes up, it's a relatively warm day today. We've got a lot of water vapor in there, okay? Now, what I'm gonna do is cool this down quite rapidly. The water molecules are going to slow down, the ones in the gas phase, are gonna slow down, okay? And they're gonna collect over here where I'm gonna put some liquid nitrogen for the cooling, okay? You're going to see deposition in action, okay? Now, as the pressure in the flask decreases, more and more of the liquid water over here is gonna evaporate. And evaporation is a cooling process. So as it evaporates, this will freeze from the top down. We'll get a layer of ice over the top of this. Now, if there's some liquid water left beneath it, it's possible for that actually to expand so much that the gas causes this to bounce around a little bit. Let's see. I got some liquid nitrogen here. It's boiling at about 196 degrees below zero on the Celsius scale. I'm gonna put that in there and it's getting cold and it's getting cold fast, okay? Hopefully you can see on this side, white, basically it's ice, that white frost that appears there. It's not pink. It doesn't have the color of the cobalt chloride. Now over on this side, I can tell this is cooling. I can tell there's a lot of evaporation going on, okay? And pretty shortly, it's gonna freeze straight across the top of that little puddle that we've got, okay? Let's give that a second. There we go. It just went across like that. There's still a little liquid water beneath it. Let's see if that decides to break through. We're probably getting some sublimation off of the top of that also. Okay. That looks like it's pretty solid all the way through. Okay. Now, I'm gonna rotate this. I'm gonna let the liquid nitrogen spill out. Frozen water with the cobalt chloride, the water that evaporated from there, okay? It didn't take any cobalt chloride with it. That's colligative properties in action. And what collected on the surface here is pure water. We can see that snow white ice, so to speak, okay, all over there. 
Now, this is starting to break loose. If I warm it up a little bit, there you go. That falls, okay? This is bouncing a little bit. You might have just seen that. What's going on is as the liquid got down here, yep, there it goes again, and it warms up, it evaporates, so gas is rising in there. It's actually pushing that up quite a bit, okay? This is only possible because we have pulled a vacuum. We've created an atmosphere in here where there is no air at all, just some water vapor. Very, very low pressure, practically zero, once we pulled the vacuum. And then the water, as it evaporated, okay, created the pressure that's in there. Now I can rotate this. Okay, you can see all that water running around again. Okay. Given time, a little bit of heat, this will melt. Okay. And we will be back to that same situation that it was in when we began. Okay. So, again, this device is called a cryophorus, cryo for low temperature work, okay? These have been around since about the 1880s. They make a really great demonstration of the behavior of gases, and we use them very often, not only in, you know, like an AP chemistry class, uh, but this itself, the first time I saw it, was in a uh, PCHEM class, an advanced physical chemistry class, uh, that was taught to graduate students at the University of Wisconsin. Okay, thank you for tuning in and joining us today. This is Morgan, signing off.